gonna die alone. I mean, true. in my life, man, shit, I don't even think about it. I don't give a fuck, man. I mm. love myself. And that's why I say, you know, one of the first modules in my course is self-love, man. I speak from a place. I love myself so much. Man, if wasn't nobody around me, man, I'm gonna have a good day. You know, I'm gonna go put turn some Netflix on, go read a book, go to the <laughs> gym. I can enjoy my day by myself. Yeah. So I ain't never worried if a motherfucker around or not. Now, if somebody is around on my type of time, man, that's great because we can do more together than alone. But I've never even thought twice about, oh, it's a lonely road. No, it just is what it is. And you know, sometimes you're gonna go through that phase where yeah. nobody that you know is on the same type of time and trajectory so you have to be alone and a lot of times it's better to be alone than with bad influences but a lot of people they so deficient on the inside because they don't do the work that they always need somebody around and even when it's the wrong people they have them around they in a wrong relationship with a woman just because they don't want to be alone they got the wrong friends that's that's bad influences just because they don't want to be alone so what i would say is man fulfill that deficiency within yourself by doing the work by yes. doing the journaling by doing the self-reflection and then you're not even gonna it's not even gonna be uh oh it's a lonely road and i'll tell you this too I used to have a wrong mentality when I was coming up. Yeah. I don't fuck with niggas, man. I do. I don't fuck. Guess what? That's because I wasn't the right individual in the right place. Right. Now that I'm on a more successful path, I love the people that I meet. In the past two, three years, I've met individuals that would do more for me than niggas that I knew that tried to rob me after I tried to do something for them. <laughs> so when you start to succeed, people who are successful, they want to help you. They want to give. It's going to be a whole different set of individuals that you've never even seen before with a success consciousness that are going to run with you when you're running at that path. So people say it's lonely at the top. I wouldn't say so. It's lonely if you still got the same habits and want those old people around. But it's always going to be somebody else. like how successful you think you're going to be to where it's not going to be other successful successful That's people right. on the set. It's You're conferences the all over the world. Yeah. It's people all over the world on yeah. that level who are looking to network and yeah. on the level I've never not met other people who want to help and come with me and be on a journey with me. So I would just say, man, just do what the fuck you need to do. Yeah. Don't Good people. Man, what's up? What's good? I'm blessed to be your host, Caleb Smith. Man, tonight we got two very special guests in the building, man. Two legends, man. A young legend and an OG as well, man. He's back as well, Pimpy Ken. We just yes. dropped that a few weeks ago. They tried to shadow ban us a little bit, but man, this one is going to be the one. And man, Game God Goldie, how you feeling, boss, man? Oh, I'm feeling amazing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Bro, this conversation is needed because we got young cats who need to learn. We got old cats who still need to learn. We got people in the middle who still need to learn, man. Life is always about learning. Go to, you know, hearing you always talk about that. Always. Learning all throughout life, man. Yeah. I love that. Man, Ken, seeing you and Goldie, young and the old, merging that. Why is that, man, just so important seeing that? Because sometimes we see young dudes going against the old heads, trying to fight with them, or old heads hating on the young dudes. But seeing this, why is this so important for us right well, now? Well, as the leader of the hip hop fraternity and dealing with a lot of young brothers that's in the music space, right? Yeah. That's one sector, right? But, you know, I think about growing up as a kid in Chicago and Milwaukee and, and having little hands. You know, I wasn't mm -hmm. on an but I had a little crossover, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was so crossing over a little bit, you sure. know. So I thought I was had some hoop dreams. And, you know, just thinking about that and then actually meeting Goldie and talking to him, I mm -hmm. said, brother, it's an element that's missing in our community. Mm -hmm. And that's that financial literacy, right. that's that influencer. You know, we want those brothers to mm -hmm. get their light as well. You yeah. know, because Goldie obviously is doing pretty well. Poppy Chuli is doing well. My man, him 500, Liquid mm -hmm. Cash, mm -hmm. all these young gentlemen that's in the same space that Goldie in is doing extremely well but they're not being propagated and promoted in the proper way. Come on. So, you know, I just asked Goldie, I said, man, is it possible that I can work with you and give me a chance and let me show you what I can do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can go and, uh, and, and uh, put this thing around the world. Yeah. And that's what we did. We didn't been on some of the biggest platforms all over the world. Yes, sir. And uh, that was the primary reason to, to, to bring another light and make being intelligent and being wise and young, sexy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of young brothers think it's a that's the OG play, you know, yep. but the YGs can make that play too. As you know, Goldie is obviously intelligent, obviously wise, you know, a lot of OGs be like, man, where you get that dude from, man? I'm learning from him, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So that was one of the things, and Willie, it's ironic that you asked it, because Willie D asked that, he said, why, why, why do you never get jealous? You know, well, I come from that game where, you know, we rec game recognized game, That's right? right? And uh, you know, I know Goldie was a player. I'm a player, so you know, real players don't play or hate. Mm. 
that's just just amongst people. If you ever was fortunate enough to be in our world, yeah. amongst players, you wouldn't see all that hate and all that confusion and all yeah. that stuff. Now we do yeah. have people that's in that game that don't have a game bone in their body. They that's just right. profess it. Mm -hmm. It's on them, not in them. So those ain't the ones I'm talking. I'm talking about the ones that's really born and not sworn in this game. They don't hate on each other. We don't trip on one another. I don't trip on his big jury. He don't trip mm -hmm. on my little jury. He don't. I don't trip on when a woman. If a woman, we in the club. A woman look at him and he getting all the attention. We don't trip on that. If he see me, he be like, "Oh, gee, how the hell you still get all those women, man? You sixty years old." He be surprised because you know they, young, they be man. looking at me and he yeah. be like, "Man, what the hell, oh, gee, What is you doing, man? Teach me the song." And I be like, "Man, what is you doing, man? Teach me the song." You know, and he he made me strong in a lot of ways, man. I learned a lot from Goldie. You Likewise. know, mm. like say for example, you know, I think you know that I'm shy, but I think I know everything. But he'll say some stuff, and it kind of reignite something that I already believe. Right. But sometimes steel shop is steel, and you be slipping. Yeah. You know, and that's Goldie bring me back, man. And he put me back on track. So that's why we so cool, man. Because really, you understand, we understand each other's value. We understand history. Goldie oftentimes say, man. They ain't gonna get this nowhere else, Ken. Nah, they can't. That's right. So. You, know, you know, and it's one of those things. I feel like this is what I mean. I got so much love for Ken, you know, mm -hmm. just how he embraced me when he met me and put me in all these positions. But I think this is what's missing. Cause when I came up, I came up under a bunch of older players with game. That's so right. we had chopping sessions. I could come to them with my issues. They would tell me different things about it. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, still sharp, sharp and still. So these dudes don't have that. So we kind of giving it to them how I came up. I'm sure how he came up. We giving it to them in podcast form. Mm -hmm. Bro, I love that, man. Goldie, bro, seeing you, young man, always consistent. Man, I think like so many young dudes right now will be scrolling and man, everybody's trying to be rich. Everybody's trying to be fit, but nobody wants to put in the work. How can young men right now see you, but then also know, yo, I got to work harder. How can we start to work harder as young men? Man, you, you know, it's really just, watch what i've done you know yeah. i think they need to do a case study on me man i really <laughs> just jumped online maybe a year ago really just started getting consistent with the videos right nine months ago really just started doing a podcast six months ago but you see me everywhere and it's not because i'm better than anybody it's a lot of people with more game than me they talk slicker than me they look better than me they got more money than me mm -hmm. but guess what they're not as consistent as me they're not gonna put the work in like me they're not gonna do these 50 city tours like me and Ken doing. Yeah. They gonna have a reason why not to, see? I just understand if I keep putting it in their face, that's how I've done everything in my life. It's been consistency even when I was, you know, doing something before I did this. I understood the way that I'm gonna beat everybody is being more consistent. So I've never met a successful person who wasn't consistent. Mm. You know, you gotta do something over and over and over again, keep putting it in their face till they can't deny it. You know what I'm saying? So anybody who trying to skip those steps, I'm gonna tell you a quick story, right? Yeah. So it was a class. They had a semester. They had two two groups. One group, they were supposed to make a ceramic pot. The other group was supposed to make a ceramic pot, as many ceramic pots as possible. So the first group, they said, make one the entire semester. Make it as, as good as possible. The second group, they said, make as many as possible, right? At the end of the semester, who do you think had the best pot? Peace, family. If you're a content creator and you rely on AdSense or brand deals for money, you're letting everyone sell something to your audience but you. You should be selling your content directly to your followers using Peep. YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok all make it hard for you to monetize. They tell you what they're going to pay you for your content and then delay paying you all together. With Peep, you determine what your content is worth and when you get paid. You can upload pictures, videos, PDFs, even audio files. Just set your price, share it to your followers on any platform, and watch the money roll in. If you're a YouTuber, podcaster, model, artist, if you're a human posting on the Internet, I'm telling you, you can use Peep. Just click the link in the description to get started. Now, let's get back to the show. The one who tried to make it as best as possible. OK, no, nope. yeah. it was the it was the group that made as many as possible. Yeah. And so the correlation I'll was it, you ha the way you're going to yeah, get better is not trying to make and perfect it's one thing. It's the volume That's doing right. it over and over. So you're not just doing it over and over and over. You're doing it over and over because you're getting better each time. So a lot yeah. of times that, right. that that repetition is because you're going to get better over time. Most people, they wait. They want to wait to get on podcast till they can talk perfect, till they look perfect, till like, well, when I get the money, because I need the, the tools. Yeah. You're going to lose like that. Mm -hmm. You have to start and you'll get better over time. You're going to suck. One of my mentors, he told me, he said, 
said, listen, get on camera, uh, make a video every day for 365 days. He said, you're going to suck until you get good. Do you want to suck today and be good in a year? Or do you want to start in a year when you think you're better and suck from there and got to wait another year till you get good? So I committed to myself. I said, I'm going to do this for 365 days. I'm going to make a video every Absolutely. single day. Okay, <laughs> and, and, and that <laughs> literally, if you look at my yeah. first videos where I could hardly look in the camera and I'm talking low yeah. to now, it's only because of that repetition because yeah. I committed. But most people have never committed to nothing in their life. Yeah. They, the only thing they've done consistent is school and work. And that's just because they've been forced. So if you tell them to do it, they're going to stop in a week. They're going to put a video up once every so often. Yes. I think about it like this. Every hundred videos I got, I'm going to go viral. So if I'm doing a video this week, next week, the next week, how long is it going to take me to go viral? So me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post twice a day. And every 50 days, I'm going to go viral. So it's just a uh, consistency, like you said. Yes, sir. Man. You know, yeah, uh, just to, to add on to that, I was listening to Robert Greene mm -hmm. the other day, and he was saying that it takes 10,000 hours to get good at something. Yes, sir. Yeah, mastery. And uh, I was thinking about it in reference to myself. You know, when I think about when I was in the game, at, after I was in it by 10,000 hours, I got good. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? It was crazy. And you know, you look at anything else, you know, basketball yeah. and things like that. So as Goldie was saying, you know, if you do it over a, a projected amount of time, you know, it's gonna eventually, you know, come. But it's another thing that they talk about. They say, practice make perfect. I want to correct that. It's perfect, perfect practice, practice that make perfect. Yes, sir. Man. Let, let me let me say something about yeah. that. What he just said, that Good. mastery, yeah. man, that's 100 percent right. He said after 10,000 hours in the game, it was just it was in you. Right. right. So a lot of people, they come to me and they be like, oh, it got to be in you. It can't just be on you. But I say, man, I didn't come out the womb with game. Sweet. You know, if you ask me when I was coming up, man, I was scared to talk to girls when I was young. But wow. because I had that deficiency, yes, I worked overtime. I was talking to 100 women a day. And so it got me like this because I was so deficient. I worked on it more than everybody else. Then I got better than everybody else. So a lot of people look and they'll see us and be like, oh, well, that's just them. No, it could be you if you put your work in. If you see anybody doing something, you just got to do what they've done. So I don't want people to ever get discouraged like, oh, you just got to be like this. It got to be in you. Yeah, it got to be in you, but it got to be on you first. It's called unconscious competence and conscious competence, yeah. right? You tie your shoe the first time, you got to be consciously right. competent and yeah. tie your shoe. You yeah. do it enough times, it becomes unconscious. Same so it name. was on you, now it's in you. So it could be get in you, but it got to be on you. You got a repetition on you doing yeah. it consciously that it'll become unconscious, yeah. which means it's in you. Creatures of habit. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Come on now. All the young dudes, man, listen, we got y'all on this episode. Goldie, we got young cats, man, right now who's going to work every day, right? But then all the other guys that's getting glorified, they either dudes in the street sometimes, or it's guys that got way more money than them. For all the kids right now, young men that's still going to work, doing everything the right way, how do they stay encouraged when sometimes it seems like everything else is getting all the rewards, all the gifts? Well, I'm going to say two things about that. One, just because you're going to work every day don't mean you're doing the right thing. Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying because because the yeah. only this ain't back in the day. Yeah. The other option ain't the streets. No, nah, man, sure. it's I know 19 year olds making three hundred thousand dollars a month. Yeah. You can make money online. So don't think, oh, I should. I'm doing the right thing just because you going to work. Yeah. If you just going to work every day and that's what you want to do. Cool. But don't pat yourself on the back. That's a, that. that's a yeah. lazy thing to do because yeah. it don't take no work to just go to work and do the mindless thing. That's true. It takes a lot of work to be an entrepreneur because yeah. you got to manage your day, manage yeah. your time, manage maybe your employees. You yeah. got to figure things out. It's not structured for you. You got to structure it yourself. It's all on so you. that's harder to do than it is to go to a job. But the yeah. rewards is greater. The risk is greater, but the rewards is greater. And for the dudes who be looking at people in the street, man, you must be young because you ain't lived long enough to see half of them dudes only having it for a small amount of time. And then if you really get into these people's life, you really don't understand the stress that they go through every day. Do you know what it's like when you're having that money, but every time you get a knock at the door, your heart pumping because you think it's the police. Every time you walk by the police, you think today's the day. You ever been to, to jail and you know your kids ain't being raised by the right person. You know the, the stress that you put your mama through when you go into jail. So it's a lot that come with it and it ain't even worth it. Like, yeah. I'm gonna tell you a story, right? And this changed my life when I was young and I went to jail. I, it was like a rectangle window and I was looking out the jail window, right? Mm -hmm. My mind, I'm going crazy. I'm looking at a bird on the, on the on the ground, and I'm like, man, I'm jealous of this bird right now. He just free. He just outside these walls. Yeah. And I remember telling myself, and I, I think about this shit literally all the time. I remember sitting in there, and I said, I would rather be a bum on the street with no place to stay than being here. When you go to jail, you realize how valuable freedom is. You couldn't give me ten million dollars to to go to to go to prison for a year. I'd rather have my freedom. But until you don't have it, you're not going to realize it. So just listen to me now until you don't have it. Mm. And then you got to realize it yourself that that ain't never the way. Mm. Wow. Come on now. Bro, Malcolm X, he's behind us, man. Seeing, man, both of y'all, great men. 
let me let me let me, let me say let me say one more thing about talk this, right? Me, bro. You good. So when I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing, what yeah. I was thinking was this: I used to have this struggle when I started to get more enlightened and start to read where I was at. I would say I'm trading hundreds of thousands of dollars for hundreds of possibly hundreds of millions. So I'm getting good money, but I'll never be able to get that money. You'll never make a hundred million dollars doing what I was doing. And if I did, I go to prison way before that. So it was like, how much do you really want? Do you want to try to get the most? Cause you're never going to be a hundred millionaire in the streets mm -hmm. or you going to prison. So it's like, you just got to transition to what your potential is, right? You know, you think it's easy. I'm gonna tell this last story. Then I'm gonna no, bro, hand it over to Ken, time. right? You good. No, you good. So I was in jail once and my uncle came to see me. And he was like, Goldie, you always trying to take shortcuts. Every time you see a mountain, you run around it five times to try to figure out what a shortcut is. And when you finally figure out it's not one, you finally go up the right way. But when you go up the right way, you tired, you exhausted. If you'd have just went up the right way the first time, That's right. you'd have already been at the top already. And that was like the story of my life. I was always mm -hmm. trying to find a shortcut and realizing, man, I'm... All this work that I did, I could have already been there. You really think you're taking a shortcuts in the street, but it's you're really way. not. Yeah, it's it's, it's you're really not. Yeah. So what I would say is you're going to have to come back to square one anyway. You might as well just start now and work your way up. Ken, you got anything to add to that, brother? Well, you know, one thing I was taught at a very young age as a very young man, you can never get rich working a job for somebody else because yep. you're making somebody else rich. Yep. So I think what Goldie said is 100 Yes, sir. I'm with you, man. Goldie, man. Bro, back to that story. Being in jail. Man, mindset is so important, right? Because being behind those bars, I can only imagine, like, hey, you got to keep your mind sharp. Yeah. You have to stay, got to stay strong. How can young men start to sharpen up our mindsets and things like that? Well, it's all about, uh, you know, I like this quote by Wes Watson. He says, your frequency is what you frequently see. That's right. And that pretty much just means, like, you could look at a problem in a positive state of mind and see solutions, see how it will work, see how you're gonna get out of it. You can see that same problem when you're in a negative state of mind and be see how it's not gonna work, see how you're gonna fail, see how you're gonna go homeless. So Tony Robbins talks about it all the time and high level people understand you have to be able to manage your state and your state is like your frequency. So what I like to do is, that's why early in the morning when I wake up, I like to read a page of a good book to put something positive in my mind. Yeah. I like to go to the gym because when you're in a peak performance state, that, that oxygen in your blood, it raises your frequency. There's no way, I don't care what's going on in your life. You go run two miles, you go do a hundred burpees. You're gonna be forced into the moment, yes, which gives you that, uh, what do they call it? Uh, it's the, the dopamine. dopamine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The dopamine, all of those, yep. all of those chemicals yep. where you like you happy. So if you can start your day with that and you can start up here and you see solutions to your problems, you see how it's going to work, then then your day is always up from here. So number one, man, you got to be working out because that's the easiest way. They say that cures depression, all of that. Yes. Your mindset is going to determine your life, how you see things. It's opportunities every single day that you're missing because you don't have the right frequency. You're not on the right time. You're not uh, as positive as you should be. You know, when you walk outside and you dress good and you feeling good and you yep. like, today's gonna be you my day. Point. You're gonna meet that girl. You're yep. gonna meet that business connection. So it's always about trying to monitor your state and working out is the best way to do that. Because you're doing more than just working out. Not only are you elevating your state, but you're, it's consistency. You go to the gym every day. You don't want to go. You go anyway. Guess what? You're building consistency. You're That's building right. discipline. You're building habits. And those habits are transferable to everything else in life. If you don't have the consistency, the discipline, then you're not going to be able to start that business and stick with it because you're going to have those same challenges. So it just works across the board. Mm. You know, so, so uh, that has so much validity mm -hmm. because when you think about it, when I was in college, right? I was trying to figure out what's the purpose of this shit. And I asked uh, Miss Poland, who was a professor, and she said, Ken, the purpose is because education creates discipline. It does. So anything yeah. you do repetitiously, you're, 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 you're developing discipline because it takes discipline to do your homework, it takes discipline to work out, you know? And uh, so, uh, you know, Goldie was saying uh, consistency. Also, Napoleon Hill said persistence. Yeah. And people say, yeah. what is persistence? Persistence when you just keep going, even when everybody said it ain't gonna work. And what, guess what persistence does? It wear down resistance. Whew. Come on, hey, y'all going crazy already, fellas. <laughs> man. Hey man, hey, hey, you got Gilly the Kid and Wallow, you got <laughs> uh, Mason, Cam, you got Pippin Kid and Goldie, it, you know, yes, DJ Envy and uh, Charlamagne. Yeah. We, 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 we the game, you yes. know, for the players, you yes, know? Yes, sir, man. Persistence, right? Life yeah. is a marathon. Got to stay consistent for a long period of time. How can we start falling in love with that journey 
opposed to always think about like that end result when I make it instead of saying, hey, every single day is a new right. opportunity. Come okay, on. well, the best thing I can tell every young person out there is go get the book, Think and Grow Rich. So yeah. I was gonna ask you about, uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Napoleon Hill gives you a, a roadmap on how to focus that. First thing he tell you is tap into your subconscious right. mind. Have a burning desire, you know what I'm saying? Be persistence, willpower, you know, have faith, you know, uh, tap into your infinite intelligence. These are the things that you can learn. Goldie read it when I was, he was 19, I read it when I was 19, and it kind of explain our lifestyles, why yeah. we have so much success and why so, we are so determined 100%. like Germans, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta just, you know, look at that book and you definitely got to, you know, have affirmations. You got mm -hmm. to write your goals down. You can't just do what Goldie's saying unless you have the entire kit. You got to write them down. You heard yeah. he said he read a positive book every day. He's creating uh, a positive mental attitude. I say, look, I say my affirmations every day in the morning too. I leave you. that out. Yeah, mm. yeah, and wow. affirmations. Wow. And like, if you go through my phone, I have a list of affirmations that I say every day. Yeah. I'm great, I'm smart. You know, Hip Hop Attorney is the number one <laughs> organization in the world. You know, I got the, I'm a great businessman. Yeah. I tell myself this stuff. <laughs> And even though you may not actually be in that capacity at that moment, eventually, you know, things is going to happen in your life that's going to magnetize those things and to, to, to make it come to fruition. Like, for example, I get this example all the time. If you want to be a fireman, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You say, I'm going to be a fireman, I'm going to be a fireman. I promise you, if you want to be a mechanic, I promise you. If you want to be a plumber, I promise you, you're going to go into a hotel you gonna be on a vacation on a family reunion with your with your mother or your father or your wife, and you're gonna go into a, a elevator room, a elevator, and you're gonna meet a plumber, you're gonna right. meet a fireman, and it's gonna you're gonna think it's chance happens. It's no, it's not gonna be by chance. It's just your universe, and he yeah. said your frequency is what you frequently yeah, see, that's a frequently fact. see. So it's all about magnetizing those things by sending it to the universe and the more science tip we call it the ethers yep. sending yeah. it to the ethers and the ethers what it does it vibrates and then it communicates back with you yeah. you know like me and him we was gonna meet regardless yeah whether he this he knew it or i knew right it's gonna be your fate yeah. it's because the way we think yeah that's uh -huh. right and then when he said he read think and grow rich i read think and grow rich there's no strange happiness that's there's right. no accident, same age no too right yeah right? Yeah. yeah he read at 19 <laughs> i read at 19. Yeah. but it, it goes to show our, our, our level of progression and success is almost tantamount because, mm -hmm. you know, we have the same principles yeah. of how we go about things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He may work out a little bit. <laughs> I, might got, <laughs> I got a one pack, he got a six pack, but I'm gonna get there, yes, though. you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get there eventually. <laughs> nah, yeah. I love that, man, I love that, bro. Man, being in the gym, right, Gody? What do you love the most about waking up early, hitting that gym in the morning? Sometimes? Oh man, I ain't gonna lie. It's not that I love it. I love the results. I love ah, the mindset yeah. that it keeps me in. See, I'm yeah. not. It's not about doing the action. You know, the action don't really matter. It's about what it builds. It builds the For mentality. Sure. It builds. It puts me in that high frequency state where I'm feeling better. I'm seeing yeah. solutions. I, I I got a better mood, and that affects everything else. You know, I understand. You know, the body, the nice body, is a byproduct. But like I was saying before, the most important part is the mindset that it builds when you go in to do something hard every single day. When you go in knowing like, damn, I don't want to go, but you go anyway and you feel good about it. You know, I look in the mirror and I'm proud when I walk down the street. I know that man didn't read today. I know that man didn't go to the gym today. So I self-validate myself. And when I self-validate myself, I don't need validation from other people. So it keeps me from doing things to please others, whether it's a man or a woman. So it's the process and the things that I get out of it mentally that really mm -hmm. do it for me. For sure. But Man. you know, Goldie said something to me yeah. on another podcast that I, I vaguely, vaguely remember. He said, when you working out and you feel like you can't go any longer and you just go that extra mile, which you say, that's where the real yeah, power comes yeah, from. It, it comes from just going that extra yeah. mile. Yeah. When you you got to dig Like deep. when you just, just with the point where you say, I can't lift that and you just lift it anyway. Yeah, you prove it to yourself that, that, that you can't. That, so that gives you the agility and the ability to to move in every aspect of your life every the same aspect. way. That's facts, man. Yeah. That's facts. Man, discipline is so important as well. That's a whole nother aspect. 
Yeah, you know? you know, but what's more important than discipline though is your environment. Cause your, come on. your environment will carry you farther than your than your discipline That's and your right. motivation. That's, That's right. like the easiest cheat code. I tell dudes like I do coaching. I tell dudes all the time. They tell me how I live in like Idaho. I get the I say, get the <laughs> fuck out that bum fuck it's, ass. There's nothing city. there for you. Yeah, listen, if yeah. you the biggest, if you the biggest in the pond, it's time to move ponds. I'm always, man, I was in uh Sacramento, I was in Vegas, I was in Atlanta, and I'm in Miami. Shit, yeah. I'm gonna go to Dubai next. Yeah. I'm always trying to go where I, I'm at the bottom because that all that has all every time I moved to a city where people was doing it big, it automatically elevated me because the standard is raised. That's right. So you got to go places where it's way bigger than where you at just for the discipline. You know, I heard something. I was on the Brandon Carter show and he was telling me he was reading a study. Yeah, and he said, that. he said, uh, if if your best friend is 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 uh, overweight, you're fifty yeah. percent more likely yeah. to be overweight. But if his friend it was like that you that right? you don't even know yeah, is yeah. overweight, you're more likely to be twenty percent more overweight. Yep. And I thought that was crazy. It just goes to show how environment is everything. The people you're around, are everything. Yeah. You have to very carefully curate your environment and the people you're around. If you're around losers, you're gonna be a loser. You bet you're better off being by yourself and just flooding yourself with positivity until you raise up to a high enough level that other successful people want to be around you than to just be there so that, that's why i say when it comes to discipline yes have discipline but environment will beat out that discipline every time if you're around a bunch of losers you're still gonna lose and i want to uh add to that goldie has become a better person since being around me and i became that's a, a better person since being that's around a off each other yeah because yeah. like you know i was chilling i didn't want to do none of this shit. you know what i mean i didn't want to cool. do no podcast or nothing. <laughs> and goldie like man we got to get up we got to go we got to go uh, call, see yes, what else move. and then yeah. you know once he started he got me in that mode mm -hmm. then i reached out to you i reached yep. out to everybody you know now he, he, it up a notch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. now he got me doing some <laughs> Yo, shit. Kid been working so what he's saying is yeah. one thousand percent because yeah. the other people i was around they didn't give me no motivation you know what i'm saying I mean, you know even in relationships Ooh. is really what i want to say Speak where i want to pivot that. You know, in relationships, you know, if, if the person that you're around, you know what I'm saying, me is envious or jealous or they don't understand your growth, they don't understand the trajectory that you're going on, yeah. they could pull you away. Your wife can bring you down. Yeah. Your girlfriend could bring you down. Your significant other could bring you down because they not, their rhythm is not matching your rhythm because yeah. you're in that environment of negativity. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. who wants to come home and, you know, debate with the person that they really trying to build with. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So, you know, in that respect, Goldie has a one, Goldie's 100% right too. So not only do you have to change the environment of your friends, you sometimes have to change the environment Ooh. of your significant other. Yeah, I was just because she that. could be bragging you down too through negativity. She could be, you know, just being petty, you know, asking stupid questions. <laughs> you know, every time they see another woman, they get yeah. jealous over yeah. nothing. When you're here with me, I'm here with you. You're my woman. I'm I'm down with you. I'm not going nowhere. Yeah. Where are you going? You know what I'm saying? Who is that? Mm -hmm. You know, you talking to somebody, it's business. They stand there with their hands on their hips yeah. trying to figure out, knowing that this is going to intimidate this woman. And she's like, you want to uh, just handle this tomorrow? You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? Because your woman is there. She acting a damn fool. Yeah. So, you know, you got to change environments not only from your negative friends that you know ain't talking about nothing that don't do nothing but sit up and play games all day <laughs> yep. you got to change that 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 environment yep. then you also got to change the environment of the people who are stuck in impoverished states that's right you know what i'm saying they comfortable with nothing you know living in the projects yep. or living you know at bare minimum you know you know i want to be around people that got a half a million dollars of jewelry on that's right you know, and everybody like, ah oh, man, dude, I love you, Jerry. I love you. Made me. He, I seen him with some uh, some Cardi. I went and bought me some. Yeah, come I'm on. like, hold yeah. on, yeah. Young, nigga. And he gotta, inspires you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I That's first met up, him, man. I had a Cardi. He yeah. came back. I'm Cardi up. You know what I'm saying? Because you know he motivate me. Yes, sir. You know, like that's a perfect example. If he's overweight. You're going to be overweight, and his yep. friends always a twenty percent chance that you're going to be overweight. But if he got on Cardi's. He's like, yo, it's I gotta get my weight up. I gotta get you some. Gonna be yeah. some I'm saying, it's gonna force Talk you to, to level up. Yeah. You know, and they say you the average some of the five people you hang around most. So right. people think about that, then forget yeah. about their significant other. Who is that person? Because that's the person that's gonna have the most impact on that's your life. You and a lot of dudes, I tell them all the time, I see they see it in my coaching. The reason you're never gonna be successful is because that broad you land with. You didn't you didn't vet her like you would vet a friend. She's everything, uh, the antithesis of everything that you want. 
You know, she's she's not motivated. She's not positive. She's negative. You're she's draining your life force just trying to keep her up on your level. And that's taking a life force away that you should be using to move forward. And a lot of times, you know, I hate to say it and I just said it, but I'll say it again. Every time I've really leveled up in my life yeah, and reinvented myself, that. man, I've had to drop the broad I had. It's not that I didn't give them a chance to elevate with me, but I understood from past relationships that I was trying to have this broad elevate with me and she was just dragging me down. The moment I got rid of her, I instantly went up. So I said, you know what? I'm not holding on to a broad who can't elevate with me because by nature, most women, they're not like men. We're conquerors. We're going out. We're reinventing ourselves. We're trying to get better. We're having personal development. Most women, they're going to stay where they at and they're going to try to treat you as the man you was when y'all met, even when you up here. So the only way you're going to get a woman to respect you at the level that you at is to meet her at this new level. You know, sometimes a woman could come around long for the ride, but a lot of these women, they don't have the mental capacity to understand that you've changed and treat you like that way they want to keep treating you like who you used to be and if somebody keeps treating you how you used to be man you're never gonna get to who you want to be and i'm gonna give you and your woman credit because she's Love, there that. over there supporting you appreciate and that. that's what every man need they yeah. need with your woman she's here i walk i'm seeing her walk <laughs> around with the camera yeah. she's she's checking the sound yeah. and that's called matching your yeah. rhythm yeah so you're 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 the exception y'all the that. exception and that's gonna take you far everybody's yeah. not gonna name how many dudes who could have a woman up here, mm -hmm. you know, actually working with them on the show. Can't find it. It's not gonna be too many yeah. women like that. Yeah. You know, and if they do, they're gonna get bored. They're gonna be yeah. venturing off yeah. and so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah. So you, you are the example of what me and Goldie talking about. That's you love. know what I'm saying? Me, Y'all leveling up together, mm -hmm. you know? And I know, I, I may be wrong, I think she's the motivating factor. Oh, for sure. Because I, because she, 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 she is too into this podcast. Yeah, yeah. To, to, you know, and I know she's motivating you. Yeah. And, and that's what you need. Yeah, I want sure. a woman to motivate me. Yeah. I want a woman she to tell me you. that I'm great. I yeah. want her to tell me that I look good. Yeah. You know, I ain't buying these expensive suits for myself. Mm. I'm buying these suits hey, you for you need her. some flowers too. Can yeah, you I want her to tell me that. And then I'm going to go buy more suits. That's love. And then I'm going to say, baby, look here. You know. You such a, a great compliment to me. Let you. me buy you a suit as yeah. well. It's you know, let's go out yeah. together. I need to bring you into my uh, circumference, you know. But if, if but if every time you know you talk to them, well, man, you got a hundred suits. Why you buy another suit? Or you know they saying some dumb stuff. Or you know you come in there, the food is not cooked. Those just things that a man don't need to be dealing with. Bro. Nah, not at all. It, 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 it's a huge energy leak. And like I was saying, your frequency is what you frequently see. Man, if you're doing all of this stuff, reading these books, motivating yourself, it's already hard enough to be successful. You already working on the resistance of your own mind and your own negative thoughts. Now you have another outside factor that's, that's negative on top battle. of that. It yeah. just makes everything a lot harder. Dudes yeah. should probably just be by themselves until they get the right woman. But the right woman could bring you millions. I've manifested a lot of beautiful things in my life with women who are on the same type of time. I say this a thing that I have when when I start to call my broad and at the same time she was like I was just calling you I was like we got that mastermind going page. and once that mastermind is going man it's like we create miracles together you know my broad I'll be on the road and I'll be like you know what I'm getting tired she'd be like suck it up you know you got this you finna be big you finna be you know she cleaning <laughs> yeah. my shoes she like you need to buy more designer see mm. that's the type of woman who gonna take you to the moon you gotta hold on to ones like that come on yeah. now hey talk to him man Man, all right, y'all so gonna leave y'all woman by the way. Make sure talking. you got an exit plan. Be <laughs> like Moses. Have hey, a hey, right, right. I, I say it all the time, yes. man. You know, I'm gonna give you a little bit of game, man. If you're trying to leave your woman, man, you can't never just leave your woman, you right? Can't. You can't never just be like, you know what, deuces. All right. Otherwise, she's going to tell all your business. Yeah. She's going to make some stuff up. That's Every right. little bit of thing that you told her about so somebody, she's going to go man. tell them. Right. So what you got to do is you got to make the broad think that she left you. You got to make her think it was her idea <laughs> to leave you. That's the only way she's going to be cool. And don't act happy for three months either. Yeah. That's the only way you can leave like, your oh, broad. You're going to get in some That's trouble. Special. Hey, he talking, man. Yeah, because look, social media. I, I was about sorry. to say, man, we be seeing Twitter posts and everything, and they be posting everything. Like, oh, this the and real. And it be lies because yeah, be careful. I, I know for a fact, it's nothing that a woman can say about me, you know, negatively sure. that would be true because I don't put myself in those trick bags. Yeah, you know, I I, I treat any woman I deal with the utmost respect. You have to. You know, I try to always be industrious. I always yeah. try to be, you know, climbing, so yeah. she won't never say. Uh, he 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 used to be. She'd yeah. never say he used to be great. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She'd am. never say that. So you know, if a woman is acting like he just said, you know, uh, con counterproductive to what you're doing, it's because she don't match your rhythm. Hmm, it's a fact. If you a stand up dude, if you do everything you need to do, and she's still tripping, 
you just have to let it go, man. For sure. Let you know, go. the word goodbye, the word good is in goodbye. Mm-hmm. Good bye. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, and it's best to let go because God is just such a merciful God. Whenever God takes somebody out of your life, Gotta take he brings somebody way better into your life. Yeah. And, 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 and and this one dude, we was in the barbershop. Uh, he's Ruggs' uh, little nephew. Little dude, he's a uh, he's, uh, designer. He designed clothes. We was at the barbershop yesterday. And he uh, asked me, uh, he said, bro, uh, he said, um, so uh, when, when, when do you leave a woman? How do you know uh, that, you know, you love her? I said, bro, listen, you don't love the bra. You just used to her. You don't love her. You just used to her. He said, why you say? I said, because you cheated on her. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Me? So you used to her, used to what? Used to her cleaning, yeah. used to her, her, her cooking, her used to her, 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 her doing little stuff for you, right. getting your shoes and stuff like that. So you mm-hmm. used to it. He said, so, he said, so, he said, so when is the best time to leave? I said, when you tired. I said, because if you not really get along with her and she don't really love you and you really don't love her, then y'all both wasting each other time. That's heavy. You know, he said, well, man, you know, my cars is in her name. He said, my uh, my it's house is now. in her name. Yeah. I said, guess what, nephew? That's because you keep falling for the same trap. You know, that's what you're used to. You know what I mean? You go and you know one of the tricks that bras use is to say, I got good credit. You can put your stuff in my name. Uh, you can come move in with me. Yeah. That's a trap. You have no control. Because anymore. now she's getting leverage on you. Man. And then when she get mad, get your stuff and get out of here. She, you know, get my car, get my car keys. And you're putting yourself in that same trap. So what you got to do is you got to do like Goldie said, you got to level up, you got to be independent. You got to have your own car, you got to have your own house. You know what I'm saying? And and if the if the woman is not meeting your standards, and she's not matching your rhythm, as the Bible says, y'all not equally yoked, yes, sir. then you have to move around because if you don't, the problem is going to persist. She's not going to get better. Yeah, See, one thing worse. that people don't talk about, and I'm going to tell all y'all that, is patterns. Mm-hmm. Patterns are very important. Yeah. If you meet a woman and she does a certain thing over and over and over again, that's probably part of her character. Mm-hmm. In the word pattern, you can find the word character. The character comes from the Greek word, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's slipping my mind right now, but uh, gyros. Gyros. So gyros mean to carve. You know, it's a Greek word meaning to carve. So that is carved into her character. Wow. The minute she gets out of character, that means that she didn't left you. Women leave mentally before they leave physically. That means she's no longer thinking about you and her pattern is going to change. And that's a, that's, a, that's an inclination or a clue that she's no longer down with you. You know, for example, and I'm going to let Goldie take the day. Say, for instance, if she cooked your food every day at 6 o'clock, she stopped cooking. If she washed your clothes every day at eight o'clock, she stopped washing your clothes. If she stopped coming up to you and give you a kiss, that means that whether you want to believe it or not, she's out of there. She's just waiting for the perfect time. Like go <laughs> just saying, you wait though to get 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 that exodus. No, nah, that's real. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, hey, and, and you know, Ken know this, right? It's a saying in the game. Let's drop them some manhood shit right now, right? Mm-hmm. It's a saying in the game. It's called whole say is no say, right? In the game. The bra can't tell me nothing, right, about some other dude or some other situation, mm-hmm. right? That's against the rules because whole say is no say because as a man, you understand when a woman is scorned, she'll say anything, mm-hmm. right? And if you go around the community talking about what the bra told you about her last dude, you won't even get respect. Hey, don't come over here with that. Whole say is no say. So I'm just saying that to y'all. Man, y'all got to be some men. If a woman come to you from another man and she got all this stuff to say about him, you tell her, listen, I don't want to hear that. As a man, you don't want to hear that. And as a man, you better not take what she say and say it to somebody else because now you acting like a bra. That's just some manhood shit some of these dudes need to learn. Yeah, man, listen. Hey, man, dog that bring a bone, carry a bone. So what that means, if she's talking about you, him, talk, yeah, she's talking about you, with you, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I learned that along, you know, I mean, Goldie, he, he, we've been hanging around for a minute and we both concluded that this is a lonely game. It is. That, hey man, when you climb a mountain, the higher you go, the colder it gets. That's right. The weather get real cold. That's right. The game get cold. The higher you get in the game, the colder it gets. So, you know, you got to understand that this is a lonely game and that, you know, along the way, you're going to lose some people. Yeah. We're not telling you to get rid of your wife. We're not yeah. telling you to get rid of your best friends. 
but circumstances allows you to make transitions. For example, you know, some people is in your life for a season mm -hmm. and some people in your life for a reason. Everybody ain't going to be with you alone to all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. You know, like a lot of people that I thought would be with me at this juncture with me and go yet. I can't even find them in the daylight with a flashlight. Wow. <laughs> they know where to be found. And a lot of them is probably doing this. Ah. Oh. Uh, him and Goldie, you know what I'm saying? He now, now he around Goldie. He, he think he do young this. now. Nah, 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 he want he he want <laughs> he want he want to do the Breakfast Club. He want to do all these Nick Cannon. Now that he with Goldie, for sure. I would have did it with them, but they wouldn't here for the reason. They were just here for the season. season. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So yeah. now that me and him then partner up, he didn't lost a lot of people. Wow. You know, Come he on. some people didn't show him their true colors, uh -huh. and that and that's how it goes. People probably been telling him all kind of stuff behind my back. People been trying to tell me stuff behind my back, and I just keep it pushing, push, get, get them out. Man, I ain't trying to hear that because people they want to be where me and Goldie at. They want to be on this level, but mentally they're not ready. Yeah. So we had to keep going. We can't, yeah. man. If I if if I have to grab Goldie and hold him every time I go up, I'm st I'm staying down. That's right. I gotta let him go in order for me to fly. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But if me and Goldie flying at the same aptitude, then I ain't got to come pick him up. Right. Wow. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, as he doing this little wing trick, he's showing me some tricks along the way too. Like, man, can you fly like this? <laughs> this is how you do this. This is how you do this. You see what I'm saying? For sure. And those are the type of people, that's what we're saying. We're not just saying be cold hearted, just say F everybody, F your wife, F your girl. Right. We just say you cannot grow if them people is out of season. Uh, let me let me point this in since Please he's do. talking about flying man i heard this from one of my mentors he said you got to stop taking ducks and trying to teach them to fly you got to find eagles and teach them to fly in formation and what's that saying is well this is what i say right if somebody is in the gutter losing they're a loser and i'm not saying that he can't become a winner one day but right. you're not going to take somebody in the gutter and turn them into a winner because if I was in the gutter, if Ken was in the gutter, we're winners. We're going to be there for a day. And please believe the next day we're going to be inching up. So if you find somebody that's been in the gutter for a long time, it's because they're a loser. Leave them there. They're that's not trying to be a winner. Yeah. Now, when they want to win, they can win. But yeah. if they're in the gutter too long, they're a loser because a real winner ain't going to be in the gutter long. So you got to stop trying to turn people into something. You can help them. You can assist somebody on a trajectory, but you can't put it in them. And a lot of times we try to put it in somebody. I've, there, I've on, wasted yeah. years of my life trying to put it in somebody that yeah. it it wasn't in and it just wasted a lot of my time and a lot of my energy so now i don't do that <laughs> hey i'm gonna give you a funny example of what wow. he said so there's some niggas i'm from the east side of milwaukee mm -hmm. right you know nothing but hustlers and drug dealers and killers and pimps right yeah man i ain't gonna say their name they know who they <laughs> is man these dudes been selling the same ounce for 30 years <laughs> i'm like crazy. dude you ain't got off the ounce yet you ain't got to the nine <laughs> I mean, this dude ain't, never got hey, promoted, man, he, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't even got a nine piece yet, man. We ain't even talking about a half, man. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, you ain't got a quarter key yet, you man. You said for 30 years. Hey, man, 30 years, same yeah, dude. could have retired from a the job same, at that point, the, the same rocks, man. That's crazy. The same things, man. Same stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, same pattern. But, but when you see them, they always got a new fit on. Yep. You know, they still driving their little whips and stuff, right? You know, they still yep. putting little rims on it. Stuck in but, the same but mode. They but can't, they can't get out that ounce that ounce mm. and you know I, crazy. And, and, and you know i ain't i ain't hustling almost 30 years wow it's been 30 years since i tried it i didn't like it <laughs> wow. I ain't hustling. and them same dudes is still doing the same still thing i actually i seen one brother man when i was in milwaukee about about two weeks ago he's like yeah man you know i got that powder and this nigga is about 63 years old <laughs> Like, yeah, man, I got that Somebody bag. Granddad, yeah, I got man. that shake, right? Yeah. I'm gonna go to the after hours. We got after hours in Milwaukee. And yeah. I'm like, I looked at him, I'm like, man, damn. Dude, wow. you still doing this? Wow. You know, and did about four bits. So, you know, that's what we said. If they're in the gutter, they're gonna probably be in the gutter, you know, for a long time because he, they, sh man, listen, even when I tried it, I went to a hole in less than two months. You know, I started off like everybody else. I tried it with a little small son and, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, flip that, flip that, flip that, yeah. flip that. Got to a whole man, got to a, you know, a, 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 you know, woo to woo, mm -hmm. I don't want to say it on yeah. this thing. Yeah, you good. And you know what I'm saying, me? And yes, when sir. I got to that, I, that's when I found out that it wasn't for me. Wow. And I gave my man, 
he'll vouch for this. I gave him a whole nine. I said, man, you can have this. Wow. He said, you, uh, man, this ain't me, man. I can't, I, this ain't working for me. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, 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 I'm part of the other game. I can't, yes, I can't do this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Cool. You know, right. but the point that Goldie was saying is that you know that's that's an example that I'm sure everybody in the hood can relate to. For sure, the dude on the block still. Some of them can't get off a ball. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. You got dudes that can't get off a ball. Wow. Been on a ball their whole career. <laughs> wow, man, yeah. y'all going crazy on this episode. All right, success, that can get real lonely as well. So how can young men that's going up in life find peace and being lonely right now on that path of going towards being successful young men? Because to your point as well, you got so many other people that's stuck in that gutter mentality. So over time, you might start off with 10 friends in a business, chops down to five, three years later, might chop down to three to two, and then just you. So how do you find peace with it just being you on that path sometimes? I mean, I'll say like this, man, you know, <clears throat> to even have to ask that question, man, I think dudes is just really soft, man. Like, mm. who cares? Man, I mean, you born alone, you're going to die alone. I mean, true. in my life, man, shit, I don't even think about it. I don't give a fuck, man. I mm. love myself. And that's why I say, you know, one of the first modules in my course is self-love, man. I speak from a place. I love myself so much. Man, if wasn't nobody around me, man, I'm going to have a good day. You know, I'm going to go put a turn some Netflix on, go read a book, go to the <laughs> yeah. gym. I can enjoy my day by myself. Yeah. So I ain't never worried if a motherfucker around or not. Now, if somebody is around on my type of time, man, that's great because we can do more together than alone. But I've never even thought twice about, oh, it's a lonely road. No, it just is what it is. And, you know, sometimes you're going to go through that phase where right. nobody that you know is on the same type of time and trajectory. So you have to be alone. And a lot of times it's better to be alone than with bad influences. But a lot of people, they so deficient on the inside because they don't do the work that they always need somebody around. And even when it's the wrong people they have them around, they in a wrong relationship with a woman just because they don't want to be alone. They got the wrong friends that's that's bad influences just because they don't want to be alone. So what I would say is, man, fulfill that deficiency within yourself by doing the work, by yes. doing the journaling, by doing the self-reflection. And then you're not even going to, it's not even going to be, uh, oh, it's a lonely road. And I'll tell you this too. I used to have a wrong mentality when I was coming up. Yeah. I don't fuck with niggas, man. I do. I don't fuck. Guess what? That's because I wasn't the right individual in the right place. Right. Now that I'm on a more successful path, I love the people that I meet. In the past two, three years, I've met individuals that would do more for me than niggas that I knew that tried to rob me after I tried to do something for them. <laughs> so when you start to succeed, people who are successful, they want to help you. They want to give. It's going to be a whole different set of individuals that you've never even seen before with a success consciousness that are going to run with you when you're running at that path. So people say it's lonely at the top. I wouldn't say so. It's lonely if you still got the same habits and want those old people around. But it's always going to be somebody else. like how successful you think you're going to be to where it's not going to be other success. With That's people right. on the set. It's You're conferences the all over the world. Yeah. It's people all over the world on yeah. that level who are looking to network and yeah. on the level. I've never not met other people who want to help and come with me and be on a journey with me. So I would just say, man, just do what the fuck you need to do. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Like even the question, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's like, man, just do what you need to do. And yeah. it's a book called The Slight Edge, right? Mm -hmm. So in one of my times that you know where I'm falling off and I'm trying to reposition my life, it was a chapter and it was called Be Okay with the Mundane, mm -hmm. right? So I would structure my day and, That's you good. know, Go wake up early, go to sleep early, affirmations, time block, uh, gym, this, that, and the third. And I had I had wrote it on over my bathroom and in my sink. It was called Be Okay with the Mundane. Right. Sometimes you just have to be okay with doing the same thing yeah. over and over and over yeah. for a long period of time until the seventh wonder of the world, which is compound interest, kicks in. And yeah. just be okay with that. So yeah. I would just say it in my mind when I'm getting anxious, I want to go fuck with the broad, I want to go to the club. Mm. Be okay with the, the mundane. mundane. So that's all I would say is be okay with the mundane. Yes, sir. And that's good talk. How you feel about that as well? Well, Ken? you know, i give you an example, right? When you're dealing with haters, right? You can smell them. Yeah, you can. Like, you can. example, uh, when I first met Goldie, right? And I know people probably saying this kind of cliche because y'all hanging out together. I first met Goldie, you know, uh, he immediately was like, oh, gee, let's have some fun. Let's go, let's <laughs> kick it, let's go to BT Awards, right? That's dope. And, you know, I get to the BT Awards and I'm like, they be like, woo do woo do it, go to like, don't worry about it. I got it. You know what I'm saying? Me. And then I be like, you know, <laughs> I be like, don't worry about it, I got it too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a different relationship yeah. when you're dealing with success. He lost these glasses, these twenty thousand wow. dollar glasses. He lost them in my car. The average dude would have found them and like, man, I can't get dude this twenty thousand dollar glass. I said, Goldie, I got the glasses, they wow. right here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me, he said, uh, hey man, uh, 
what what what, what, what I need to do? I said, bro, you don't need to do nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? Everything is out of love. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? He said, man, I ain't used to that type of shit, bro. <laughs> OG, what's the catch? You know what I'm saying? I said, ain't no catch. You know, so when you are a successful person, you're looking for people of like-mindedness. Yes, yeah. You're looking for people that you can be comfortable with because you know the roads that you take to get to your destiny is not going to be the ones to get you there. It's going to be your detours. Wow. You know, the detours are the haters, are the best friends, are the wives, the girlfriends, mm -hmm. the people that you thought was a part of your destiny. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Me, and then you meet somebody like Goldie, a detour, yeah. you know, and it and it helps you get to your destiny quick. You know what I'm saying? Because out of all the people I've been around in the last five years, not one of them, not one of them motivated me in the capacity this brother motivated me. And likewise. And all you got to do is see the pattern. Look at me on all the shows I've been on. Yep. Look at what I've been doing You've since been him been yeah. hustling and working together. For sure. You know, so that's how I look at it, you know. But it's an old saying that I say that, you know, get rid of the dead weight. Mm -hmm. You know, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King was his, I mean, uh, Muhammad Ali was his best friend. Yeah. Muhammad Ali used to say, I float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I'm Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. So if you got 10 pounds, 20 pounds on your back, you walking around Lenox Mall every day, every day for 365 days, you got a 20 pound book pack on your back. Take it off on the 365th day and see what happens. You're gonna feel like Muhammad Ali. You're gonna feel, feel like a butterfly. Yeah. You're gonna feel like a butterfly sting like a bee. Good analogy. You're gonna feel lighter than Muhammad Ali. Yes, sir. So that's what you got. You gotta get rid of the dead weight. Yeah. Hey man, listen, like the brother said, you know, we came here alone, we're gonna die alone. You know what I'm saying? Me. So the the thing that one have to always remember when you're talking about success is success leave clues. Yes, sir. It's a fact. You know, so when you're successful, look for the clues. Yeah. My new book, I don't really want to talk about it, but it's got yeah. something to do with success. Yeah. And what I do is I did, I, for the last 10 years, I've been doing the research on all of the most successful men in the world. You know, Ru, 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 Ruben Murdoch, mm -hmm. uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, Dale Carnegie, yeah. uh, Jeff Bezos, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, and Barack Obama, Magic Johnson. Yeah. So I literally, and it's in this phone, I got over 10 years of research. Yeah. And I basically, you know, do my little thing. I don't want to give my name, my book, because I want nobody to yeah, steal yeah, it. Yeah, but, for sure. but, but, but the the uh, the purpose of the book is to have a discussion yeah. about success. Mm -hmm. And the only way to have a discussion with success is you got to talk to success. So I have a out of body experience with success yeah. every periodically, every now and then, and I kind of extrapolate different attributes for why this person did this or why this person do that. Why Goldie think this way? Why Goldie think that way? Mm -hmm. And in all those interactions, I'm finding clues. That's right. Consistency. Yeah. Persistence. Mm -hmm. Burning desire. Burning yeah. desire is a big you know, one. All of these are in my research. Yeah. And so what I, my, 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 my ultimate purpose and that's what Napoleon Hill talked about purpose. My ultimate purpose is to trump and to compile something that's not, if not better, that's uh, comparable mm -hmm. to Think and Grow Rich. Wow. You know, and I want to do a version of that. And it's going to be caricatures. It's not mm -hmm. going to be me. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be me delineating mm -hmm. other people's success. Wow. But in the process of me delineating these successful gentlemen, you know, I'm going to be the author. Better. You know, and it's going to be really, really uh, appalling to a lot of people. They're going to be like, how can Ken do something of this nature? But it's been a task of mine. And the reason we're, we're motivated to task, you know, Napoleon Hill say, if you do something and it fail, you try again. So the first book, Pipology, it didn't fail, but it was something that happened in the prison that they did, they banned my book wow. in certain prisons. Then I did another book, uh, The Art of Human Chess, and they end up banning that. So my, my, my goal is to put a book in prison that's gonna have so much game and teach brothers so many ways how 
to conquer and how to obtain success that they're not going to be able to band it. But, you know, in that book kind of delineate what you're talking about as far as success. There's certain things, you know, that goes on with successful people. There's certain characteristics that success uh, encompass. And that's what I'm going to do. So that book, I can't say the name of it right now. I'll probably say it when I come back on your podcast. Yes, sir. That book is going to pretty much say, well, going to answer your question. But in answer your question in short form is that, you know, success leads clues mm -hmm. and the roles that you take to get to your destiny is not going to be the ones to get you there. It's going to be detours. your detours. Wow. And so that's how you deal. You just expect, expect. They, it, oh, I, I, I'm going to put it better. Uh, you get in life not what you expect, mm -hmm. but what you inspect. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Hey, that's a heavy that's gym. Deep. Goldie, <laughs> earlier, bro, you said something about manhood right what yeah. does manhood look like real manhood today i mean man you know i say it like this right so when i'm operating in what i feel like is true manhood i feel like i'm operating in my godhood what did god say in the bible let's make man uh in my image and likeness yes, right man right mm -hmm. wasn't even thinking about the woman yet right? right but so you know somebody asked me okay well what does that mean then uh you know when i'm not lying when i'm not underhanded yeah. You know, when I'm not sneaking around, when I'm not doing things that I know morally, like, oh, I feel a way about because I'm not moving in a righteous way. You know, so when I'm just operating as a solid 100 percent human being with integrity, with values, whatever my core values are, I feel like that's what manhood is. And, you know, that's why I feel like, man, when you operate in your in your true manhood, which is closest to your godhood, a true. woman treats you like a god because so many dudes don't. They lying, they sneaking, they underhanded, they doing all of these things. Yeah. And so they don't get the respect. But when you operate in your manhood, I'm not lying to her. Yeah. I'm letting her know what it is, what it ain't. I'm letting her know she could cut, she can, she can accept it or reject it. I'm not standing for things that I don't feel like are okay, and I'm gonna walk out the door about my respect and my manhood, even if it means being homeless. And when I behave in that manner, not just telling her, but showing her, walking in it in front of her, she treats me like a guy because she sees I'm operating in my godhood, my manhood, which is closest to my godhood. So that's what I mean, man. I mean, you could define manhood however you wanna define it. At the end of the day, you gotta define it for yourself, but. Yeah. You know, it's about just living to your principles, mm -hmm. you know, not lying, not cheating, not being underhanded, saying what you mean and meaning what you're saying, having a mutual respect with somebody, saying how you feel, you know, not being underhanded, you know, just being 100 yeah. to me, that's manhood. Yes, sir. You know, not gossiping like a broad, not hating on the next man because he got more than you. Not, you know, if you feel a way about it, you know when you operating like a man and when you not, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. Yeah. How you feel about that, Ken? Well, you know, uh, Goldie uh, once said something about, you know, we are all creatures of habits, so we develop habits, and those habits come principles, right? Yeah. I think every man stands on principles, and the principles develop the character, back to, I was saying, gyros, the Greek word, it, it carves into certain things. You know, like he said, if you do something consistently, it's going to create a habit. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not in you, you know what I'm saying, me, and it's on you, eventually that habit, yeah. habitual behavior, we create it, we, we, we put it in you. And so I think that's what a man, a man is a collection of habits, a collection of principles, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, morality, yes, sir. you know, like he said, his moral compass, you know, you gotta have a moral compass, you know, like it's certain things mm -hmm. as a man that I'm not going to do, yeah. you know. Uh, it's just certain things that I, I'm not gonna do, no matter what you say or, or how much money he said you give him ten million dollars, and he's still not gonna go to jail. Wow. You know, it's those are that's a man. Yeah. You know, saying what you mean to mean what you speak, speaking with two tones, the one in your mouth and the one in your shoe. You walk that walk and talk that talk. Mm -hmm. That's what my father taught me. Wow. Pops would always say, "Hey, man, you know, a man stand on his word. All you have, son, is your word." He used to always say that he was That's a country talk. dude from Mississippi. And I was wow. like, man, what did he do talking about your word? <laughs> and then when, you know, I violate somebody, I'd be in prison or something, and, you know, I, you know, I was a little gangster. So I might, <laughs> you know, press yeah. up on a nigga, son. And then, you know, uh, hey, man, kid, you go, yeah, I'm gonna give it to you, homie. Yeah, woo do woo do woo it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I get slick on him. He's like, nigga, fuck you. He mm -hmm. said, man, you gave me your word. That's like, right. now nigga ready to kill me mm -hmm. because I gave him my word. Wow. And so after a few altercations in the prison and shit, you know, and, you know, a couple of, you know, woo, 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 you know what I'm saying? You know, I realized that I was having these problems because I wasn't keeping my word. And then my pops were, were, were dumb on me. But I was trying to 
be a part of the in crew, crew yeah. you know, trying, you know, you had the gangsters up in there, the vice lords, you know, it was a little sh crazy yeah. shit going on. And, you know, you had the affiliates, you know, and sympathizers. So, you know, you want to be a part of that when you're 18, 19 years old. Right. You know what I'm saying? Me, you, yeah. you, you go to somebody and say, hey man, you got a store? Like, yeah, yeah. what you got in your store? I got Zuzus and Wham Whams mm -hmm. and I got some uh, noodles and you take all that shit and like, I'm gonna pay you back, <laughs> right? And next day, you know, you on the tier and you wow. know, y'all shaking it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You boxing wow. it out, you know what I'm saying? Cause you didn't keep your word. Wow. So I, I, I realized that that was the road I wanted to go. So for all the young brothers, that's 18, 19, because Ken, hearing you talk about that, right? Peer pressure, that's a real thing right now for mm -hmm. all the young kids. How can young black men not fall short when it comes to the peer pressure when you got friends in the streets or when you got friends that's not doing what they're supposed to be doing? How should young black men not fall short to that peer pressure? Hey man, what I tell people all the time, I tell my son this all the time, hey man, read a book. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't really become the man that I am today until I start expanding my horizon. Wow. You know, books have a way Man. of taking you all around the world mm -hmm. and taking you to a whole nother stratosphere. Yeah. Man, I'm reading Napoleon Hill, he talking about uh, 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 Andrew Carnegie and he having all this money and stuff <laughs> like that. And he talking yeah. about Henry Ford and how they started for nothing, how they made it, that gives you a little hope. You know, I used to read Zig Ziglar, Zig, mm -hmm. Zig Ziglar, I see you at the top. Yeah. You know, I read Machiavelli, you know, I read uh, The Prince. You know, I read all these books while I was incarcerated and that helped me yeah. to kind of develop my own mind. Yeah. You know, like I said, you know, when you're young, you know, that peer pressure is real. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, I never joined the game. Mm -hmm. You know, fortunately, I never joined the game, but I hung with them, so I might as well join them. But you know that was pressure. I remember I'm gonna show you, man. The, you know the craziest thing that happened to me on peer pressure, man. This is gonna blow your mind. So in Milwaukee, it's a place called Riverside School. Mm. So I live on the east side. So it's a bridge, like a bridge that's like about 100 feet, and up under that bridge ain't nothing but water. So we had to cross that bridge every day. Mm. So it was some white dudes, a white dude named Dan, and it's a couple of black dudes. All of us. They said, man, we gonna go up under the bridge and we go crawl all the way across up on, on, on the on the little steel, you know, wow. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And if it, either, either one of us would have failed, we would have died. So the white boy led the way. And I didn't want to go, but the peer pressure, I'm like, I can't let this white dude, man, outdo me, man. Cause you know, he, you know, he, he was on my, he lived literally across the street from wow. me. So I, I couldn't let him do it. Right. Man, I had so much peer pressure, man. I was so scared, bro. I promise man, I was scared for my life, mm -hmm. but I just had to do it. You know, I had to do it because I could not let these dudes outdo me. And I didn't want them to say I was a punk, you wow. know. And so that's, you know, sometimes, you know, people go through that. But, you know, the way I do it, like I said, I, I learned how to become a leader. It's a it's a part in a Think and Grow Rich called the, the 11 Steps of Leadership. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And it, he, Napoleon Hill breaks it down to you how to become a leader, wow. you know. And then, you know, you got to read you know, the art of war, you know, you got to read the 33 strategies of war by uh, Robert Greene, mm -hmm. Mastery, uh, Human Nature by Robert Greene, the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. And I gave that to all my sons. Mm -hmm. My son, Little Kenny, the one I told you that was mm -hmm. in the Netflix special, All yeah. American, and did the movie, Play the Flute. Yeah. Is that five million on, uh, on uh, YouTube right now, my son, Supreme, they lead us. Because I gave them them books when they were young. My son did not hang out. He didn't do, he, he didn't. Now one of them, you know, got with that crazy stuff. Now, as my other son got older, you know, he's his own man. He won't even listen to me. I'm kind of glad, you know, he do his own thing. You know what I'm saying? But look, Kenny is not a follower and Supreme is not a follower, wow. you know? So I'm proud of them for that. You know, I know if they did something, it's because either they was effed up and they had to make a move yeah. or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They just wanted to do it. But, yeah. you know, so, you know, I, I, I can personally say that me giving them them books, mm -hmm. my son, them books, and I say the books is the way. I don't know. He may have Man, I one. say the same thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Stamp that. Man, on social media, Goldie, I'm scrolling all the time. It's a lot of women you know, talking about these men are sassy nowadays. And yeah. honestly, man, from my own personal experiences, sometimes it's a lot of young dudes that's like my same age that's not moving on the code, that's not moving off of principles. 
what do you think is just going on in this entire ecosystem right now that we got young dudes that are being labeled as sassy somewhat? How do you feel sexy? about that? Sassy, sassy, weak, oh, weak. soft. Oh, yeah. oh man, that shit yeah. bad right now. I mean, he said know, it's bad. I sure. say two things. One, yeah. you know, women will call a man sassy just because he want to go 50 50 with her on a date, you know? Yeah. So, but when they valid, when they saying sassy and they just saying, you know, a male isn't necessarily acting like a man, like we were just talking about with certain codes and principles and For being sure. 100, you know? It's a difference between a male and a man. You know, Andre used to say this all the time. You know, a male is a gender. A man is a position. That's right. Right. So just because you get older, you can be a grown male. So to be a man is a position. And what a position requires requirements, you yeah. know, credentials. And I think a lot of dudes just haven't grown up with that male figure to be able to tell them what it is. You know, nobody was around to tell them, hey, Everybody stop. That female yeah, female yeah, that count. female. Okay, I'm gonna get to that. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you if you know, when I was coming up, you know, I had uncles, I had different people around me. Like, man, stop doing that. Man, stop doing that. Hey, man, this is how you supposed to do that. Man, this is how you supposed Showing to do that. Way. So if you didn't have that, you know how you gonna act you gonna act like what you saw and if you was in a house where predominantly with your mother and your aunties and your sister you're gonna act the way they act that's why these niggas gossip that's why these niggas be acting weird because they've been around women and they picked up those tendencies not really understanding how dangerous it is when a man has female tendencies because mm -hmm. now you got that male strength with that quick temper with that emotionality with that you know gossip so you know i just feel like you know, men just got to come get the game from us. You know, look at the men that you admire and, and follow their work and, and, you know, do those things. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, uh, uh, most men who are, you know, weak is because, as he said, you know, they grow up in a weak environment. Right. See, the reason why the lion is the head of the household is not because, is the king of the jungle, is not because of his cause or not because of his vicious teeth yeah. but because of his roar you know what i'm saying yeah he's raw he's get a mess out of elephants and giraffes mm -hmm. right but the reason why the man is the head of the household because of his adam's apple sit your butt down yeah you got if your woman voice. tell your kid to sit down they're gonna be a little you know but it's different when delayed. it comes to that but if you tell yeah. them to sit down that voice is so strong yeah you know that they immediately obey your voice wow right yeah. So when you don't have that Adam's apples in the house and everything is feminine, feminine, and he said, your frequency is what? What you frequently see. What you frequently see. Come it on. creates, you know, and a lot of dudes, you know, and I, I got to be careful what I said because I ain't trying to get yeah. shot about, but yeah. a lot of dudes, you know, when they find themselves, you know, in certain lifestyles, yep. it's because they were exposed to certain feminine energy all their life. At a younger age. And then they have a certain characteristics and they say oh you know what you know he woo to woo to woo yeah. but they don't necessarily be that way yeah. but because they act in a certain capacity and they switch it and swatch it and yeah. you know and, and, and doing all this feminism and stuff mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying this, fem this feminine yeah. stuff you know what they do and they're attracting other people of that nature yeah. right and them people become like predators on them you know what i'm yeah. saying and they end up flipping to the wrong side of the game but at the same time you know what I'm saying? Me, a lot of those dudes who are sassy, mm -hmm. they can be very dangerous. Yeah. Because the reason why yeah. what that creates is not only does it create a feminine side, but it also creates emotional it side. No people. So most yeah. people that most of the brothers out here that are doing all this killing, they won't admit it. But the reason why they so dramatic and the reason the why they so crazy is because, you know, they seen their mama take the key to the new car, wow. take the brick and bust it, get out there and argue yeah, with the neighbors, see. you know what I'm saying, me? And, 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 and created that feminine approach where yeah. your father might say, man, come here, let me talk to you. My father was <laughs> crazy. Yeah. My yeah. father, if somebody did something, he's like, hey, man, let me talk to you, man. Yeah. Listen, man, I'm going to tell you like this here, man. <laughs> hey, man, listen, you hey, ain't going to be disrespecting time. my kid. One more time, man, yeah. we're going to have a problem. You yeah. understand that? Yeah. Yeah, I understand that, Mr. I. Okay, but man, don't mess with my, my shit. Your mom, ah, yeah. <laughs> Pow, throw the rock, woo, 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 police come, everything come, and you know, and and, and and so the dudes that ain't got that father figure, they're like, why oh, you mess with my mama? Why oh, you mess with my mama? Yeah. Uh, mama, I'm finna go off. And they go straight off, Baby and now boy, man. they don't That's fight no movie. more, so yeah. they start killing. Yep. yep. And so, 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 so they yep. gotta get that course by me and Goldie. They got to come take our course so they can learn how to be men. Right. They can learn 
how to control their EQ, their emotional which, quotient, which, yeah. and, and be more on their intellectual quotient because you can sure never so. let, you can never win an argument. You can never approach a situation and mostly expect a great outcome. That's never going to happen. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, when you hear people kill people, you know what they say? Snap. Mm -hmm. Because it's impulsive. Yeah. Impulsive is not intelligent. Impulsive means you move on impulse. Yeah. And that's why you have so many people die. And that's what women do. Women are impulsive. They move on impulse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if they're not corporate women, if they're not mm -hmm. intelligent women, they don't have businesses and their job or their position don't require them to be less emotional. Mm -hmm. Because women have to be emotional because they raise our children. Right. So in order to deal with crying babies, in order to deal with, with that. all that stuff, you yeah. have to be emotionally equipped. Yeah. But if a man take on that same emotional characteristics and a man has the ability, and then you know what? It's even crazy because a lot of dudes don't even fight no more. No. Women don't fight. Listen, but listen, listen yeah. to what I'm about to say. Yeah. Women don't fight. Yeah. Right? Most women can't whoop a man, right? These dudes have become so emotionally connected on the, to their feminine energy that they don't fight neither. Wow. Who fights anymore? First they do bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang. Yeah. That is an impulse. Mm -hmm. And it's detrimental to our community. It's going to send those dudes to prison. Yeah. So in conclusion, I just want to say, man, you know, that sassiness, it comes from too much uh, circulation with a female or lack of a father in the household yeah you know a male should be present to channel that emotionalism right yeah. you know it creates stability within the child yeah if the man is not there if you look at most of my all my kids you know they basically emotionally stable hmm. because you know i would check them on certain levels yeah. you know my daughters and, and and my sons you know yeah. i would check them and i would check their emotions i'd be like man come here what are you crying for? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, stop crying. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. Yeah. No, nah, I do you, that you same. You saying what you're saying. Listen, yeah. listen. <clears throat> and, you know, that's why I, I got full custody of my son because I saw the trajectory of where it that's was headed. Son. See, a lot of dudes, they be like, you know what? I'm going to just go get this money. They not going to remember. You don't understand that from the age of, I think, zero to seven when the subconscious is being yeah. formed because they in theta up until seven years old. Yes. That habit. That, that character is going to be in them for the rest of their life. And you're going to have to undo that stuff when they're 20 and 30. Yeah. So once I started to see certain characteristics, I said, no, I got to be in my son's life full time. I can't say, okay, I'm going to go out here and get this money. His personality is going to be formed. Yeah. And I don't want to have a son that I'm, you know, make out to make excuses for because I wasn't there. So I see the personality things where he get to crying and I tell him, I'd say, I'm going to leave him alone. Listen, figure it out. But his mom want to come over there and console him. And I got to move her out the way. Like, listen. He think that's okay to keep crying because he gets attention from it. Soon yeah. as I leave him alone for a minute, he gonna stop crying. Yeah. So it's very important to have a father figure in the household yes. that uh, teaches a man how to be a man. Because if your mother keeps teaching you and giving you attention for crying, giving you an attention for being emotional, doesn't tell you to stop crying, doesn't give you that hardness, you are gonna grow up with that. And it's gonna be very hard to get rid of later. How can you be successful being soft? Yeah. Uh, uh, weakness equals poverty, yes. right? The, if you can't handle stress, uh, um, how much stress you can put on your plate is going to determine how successful you are. Right. The most successful individuals that I know, millions of dollars a month, sold companies for $200 million. If you looked at their day, they handle a level of stress that would break most people. Yeah. But that's the ceiling to your potential is how much stress you can put on your plate. So if you're raising a weak child, you're just ensuring that they're probably going to be unsuccessful because they're going to they're going to uh, uh, like like a woman going to do. She's going to cuss her boss out and get fired. Yeah. You know, she's not going to be able to handle situations properly because she's too weak to do it. So, I mean, even to myself, like even to this day, I can say I'm still working backwards to become harder because mm. my mom made it. So, oh, you don't want to play that sport no, no more. It's OK. Oh, you don't want to do that. It's, it's OK. It made me lazy and weak. Had I had my father around who passed away, he would have he would have never let that stuff go. Yeah. You know, he would have made me harder. So it's very important. And what he said really just triggered something for me. Not for sure. Yeah, man. but he's absolutely right. I was so hard on my on my son. Right. I remember one time they probably get mad if I said, you know, they was doing some crazy stuff. And I grabbed him. And we, you know, my house, we had the spiral stairs that go all the way up. I grabbed him. I said, look down there, nigga. I said, you see, what, you see what's going to happen? You keep playing with me. And, 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 and they quit playing, man. You know, and, 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 they need that his mom, yeah. but the mama was like, you know, you should never do that. You're going to traumatize them, right? <laughs> nah. I said, no, I'm not traumatizing them because, you know, my whole time from, the, from, 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 from birth to them yeah. 18 until they went on to college, right? Yeah. Neither one of them never came to me disrespectful. 
because wow. I put that fear in established. Him. But yeah. now I see my son raising his son and he do the same thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he disciplined him in a in a positive way, not yeah. physically, but in a positive way. And you know, like I, I don't know if I told you before, they said, how do you discipline your kids? I said, I used to give them a, 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 a 10 words and make them write a thousand times a piece. <laughs> wow. And then I give them, I make them write the meaning down. And what I was doing was subliminally, like he said, I was forming them as a kid. I was forming their mind. So when they got to school, the teacher would be like, you know, uh, your son don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. And so little Kenny be like, no, nah, dad, that ain't the truth. He said, I'm just finished before everybody. Wow. So I had them little dudes so smart. Had them reading Think and Grow Rich. My son, Supreme, you, you, if you bring him on this show, he'll break down the whole book to you. Wow. You know, so you, it's, 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 it, and the woman ain't got time for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she didn't tell him to do your homework. And then if he start acting crazy, like he said, they're going to go soft on him yeah. every time. Yeah. You know, my mama, hey, my mama, hey, man, I, I, I was so bad, bro. And, and I'm going to I'm confirm with Goldie. I was so bad in school, right? And my daddy used to beat the shit out of me. He used to beat me with stitching cords so bad for acting up in school because my dad was big on school. It got so bad that, you know, a dude might say something to me. I might slap him or son. I get suspended, right? And I come home. And I'd be suspended. And my mom said, I can't tell your daddy. You know, she was yeah, so like soft. Yeah. She be letting me get away with everything. <laughs> we be up in there, man. We be yeah. doing the most, man. And That's she got crazy. tired of my daddy whooping us. But my daddy, you know, if he would have knew that, you know what I'm saying, he would have yeah. been upset. But my daddy, when he whoop us, he know exactly what he, what he doing. He, right. he, he, he he showing us, you know, right from wrong. That's what he called. He said, this is right. This is wrong. This is right. So he'll whoop you and then he'll talk to you afterwards. I used to hate the talking part. I was like, nigga, you just whooped me. What are you talking about? I don't want to hear that shit you talking about. But you can't say that to your dad. But my mama used to always let us get away. Man. So imagine... If the daddy ain't there, oh, yeah. how much the kids get away with? All that discipline so, is missing. So, 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 in conclusion, yeah. I know y'all got to go. I see you your wife it. give us a signal, yeah. but but here's in conclusion. And I think I talked about this on the last show. Look what had happened. Look what look what has happened since the father has been absent in the black community. Yeah. Look how many murders it is in the black community. Look yeah. how many young men that's going to jail and selling yeah. drugs. Drug man, use, I yeah. couldn't. You you man. It, my father was like Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. you know, and we was like little country. He was wow. a dictator. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was a real dictator. Yeah. He was like Gaddafi. You ain't doing, y'all, you couldn't, y'all ain't selling no drugs. Y'all ain't doing none mm -hmm. of that. Not in yeah. this house. Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you got dudes and stuff, man. You know, they, they do it so good. The mama, now the mama won't get some clothes from Rainbow. Yeah. And, you know, she want to get, <laughs> she, yeah, yeah. She right. want them to take a shopping and give me, uh, give me 500. And she let, you know, she, yeah. and now she's complicit. Yeah. That's why you see so many women going to jail with their sons. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't have a father figure. Their wow. father figure, like his son, I guarantee you he's going to go to college. Yeah. If he's in his son life, both of my sons went to college. As yeah. crazy as Supreme is, as, as, as slick as he acting, yeah. as crazy he acting yeah. online, he still went to college right yeah. here in Atlanta. Right. So, uh, uh, my son, uh, 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 Kenny, the oldest son, he's in all movies that he graduated because yeah. I was in his life. Wow. Come you on, know? Man. And, man. And, and, you know, I mean, and I learned from my father. Now, people say, well, how did you go to jail? And how did you get bad? Because my father was a street dude. Right. My uncle's a street dude. I was trying to be like them. They never went to jail. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that if you rob a bank, you gonna get caught, you going to jail. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I didn't know if you rob jewelry stores, you gonna go to jail. Yes, sir. But once I got out and I went there, everything my father said, he said, son, if you go to jail, you're gonna be like a monkey in a cage. Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt the entire time I was in prison. And that's why I ain't been back since 85. Almost 85. 40 years. Next year, make 40 years. Yeah. Wow. Ken, Goldie, man, y'all gave out some real game, bro. Y'all most definitely have to come you back. You got to ask him about Goldie the female kind. Goldie, the great yeah. female kind. I've heard you talk about that a plethora of times. If you can, man, please break that down for all us. All right, I'll bro. break it down, right? The great female kind is this elaborate kind that all women have innately in them. Mm -hmm. To act like the man is less valuable than her. When in reality, almost nine times out of 10, the man is almost always more valuable Ooh. than the woman. You know, apples to apples, oranges to oranges. I say it all the time, man. Where does a woman derive her value from in society? Where? 
most times uh, it can come from work, but also it can come from marriage as well. Yeah. Look like who you with, with your looks, how you look as a woman. That okay, can attract so a certain man. I, I, I haven't heard yeah. that one, but yeah. So yeah. most women in society, they derive most of their value from their looks. Yeah. So what I like to say is all the time, how can somebody whose value derives from something which is destined to go away be more valuable than somebody whose value comes from their competency that they can have when they're 70 years old? That's why you see a 70 year old man with a 20 year old woman, but never a, a 70 year old woman with a 20 year old man. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not to down the woman. It's to just look at facts because it's men out here. It's it'd be celebrities. It'd be basketball players. It just be a man who take take care of the household, take care of the kids, take care of all the bills. But he comes into his house and his woman treats him as if he's less valuable than her when none of this would be going on without him. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people are lining up outside to say, yeah, I want a man to take care of me and my kids and my household. Tons of women. How many men are out there saying they want to take care of a woman in her household and, and, and some kids that ain't his? It's not that many. <laughs> so therefore, That's what's it. valuable is rare. And yeah. so that man is yeah, more rare. It's a woman right now talking to her man crazy. He come in, he go out to work all day. He pay the bills. She mm -hmm. got kids. She's a single mother with three kids. Mm -hmm. How valuable is she really? How valuable is he? He's a man willing to take care of any woman that he's with. He's more valuable. If he stopped dealing with her right now, she would have nothing. Her entire life is predicated on this so man's income. Yeah, he, you know what I'm saying? So what I'm just saying is men, start to recognize your value and don't let this woman devalue you. Understand what you bring to the table. You know, and then I say all the time too. you know, what does a woman bring to the table most of the time for most dudes? It's really just a vagina. So what I say is this, instead of getting caught up in this illusion of, of the makeup and the costume that the woman puts on, take the pussy off the pedestal, put it in its proper perspective. Now ask yourself what this woman is really coming with. What value is she really bringing to the table? Because that's her true value. Because after you have sex with her a hundred times, that sex means nothing. After you've seen her without her makeup and a wig on, her looks mean nothing. So what is going to stand the test of time is her character. Her, her who she is what her soul is like so look at those things put everything else to the side take the pussy off the pedestal take the looks off the pedestal and look at her for who she really is and man a lot of times the man is gonna see that the woman has not really a lot of value and i'm not saying women can't have value i'm saying that in society because a woman gets praised mostly on her looks that's what she spends most of her time on so therefore she spends less time on her character building on her personality on these other attributes her nurturing skills Ooh, so she spends all this time on her look, so she's deficient in these other areas. So I'm just telling dudes, man, start looking at the things that matter. Yes. Man. And that's why I like women that go to colleges that have yeah. natural hair yeah. and they be bookworms, you know what I'm saying? Because they bring more to the I'm table. Telling people, hey, you need to start looking for the nerves, man. I'll be telling guys all yeah. the time. Man, hey, those are the ones, right. man. Yeah, we, man. We, smart. we met a, 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 a somebody, not, he didn't meet him, but you know, we were just, she was the one taking a picture. Yeah. And she looked yep. regular, but she was a doctor. doctor you she? Know? Tell me. I mean, Goldie, she of course, wasn't interested. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, but she was hey, a doc she was a doctor. The ones. And I was like, she was the exception to his rule. That's right. And and I introduced him, I said, This is Dr. So and so. And you know, Goldie, you know, of course, you know, he, yeah. he kicked it with her, you know, he's yeah. always a, a gentleman. Yeah. You know, but that was the exception. Yeah. She wasn't we did nobody was looking at her with her. Nope. No, everybody uh, passed her up. See, right. and, 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 and truth be told, she was off off the dribble, respectful, submissive, so kind, but nurturing, yeah. right? A doctor, which has yeah. a lot more value than most of the women I meet. Her body was in shape, you wow. know, all of that, wow. you know? And yeah. she's educated. Yeah. So that's yeah. a lot of but, things but, that's but, overlooked. But she wasn't basing everything on her looks. That's right. Because it was so many women in there, and she was a doctor, and you, we would have never perceived her as being a doctor, but some way... Uh, I, I was showing her something. I was showing her one of my movies, yeah. and the conversation came up, yeah. and I introduced Goldie, and she and he was like, "Wow, you a doctor?" He was like, "We both was amazed." So, what, I guess the moral of the story is that you know, hey, look, you know, there are men out here that looking for doctors, looking for dentists, looking for uh, psychiatrists, looking for people, you know, that got businesses. Yeah, you know, it's not just you know everybody looking for uh, a butt. Everybody ain't looking for, you know, uh, breasts. Everybody ain't looking for some good coochie. You know, we're looking for value in other areas. And men, you need to start letting women know that. You can't, every time a woman, you know, uh, you see a woman, she got a nice butt. You know, you can't say, hey, you got a nice butt. You should say, hey, I bet you got some nice brain up under that uh up under that weed or whatever you got on, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I know you smart up under your wig, girl. I would love to see what's up under that wig. Hey, and, you your know, mind. yeah, I yeah. want to raise your mind, not yeah. your skirt, you know, and yeah. I think that that That's would create a different dynamic. Yes, sir. Man, man, Goldie, Ken, y'all gave out so much game. 
on the way out, Goldie, if you could talk to younger Goldie that was homeless during that period of time and showering yeah. in the gym, what words of encouragement would you have for man, I'd young say, Goldie right I'd now? I would have said, man, keep doing your thing. Because truth be told, man, like even when, only when I think back on it, do I think, oh, yeah, I was homeless. Man, I didn't have yeah. no conception of where I was because I knew where I was headed. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to be homeless. I jumped out to another city where I, was, I had a room that I could stay in. I took that risk on my own. To me, right. taking the risk to possibly get more was more positive in my mind than staying exactly where I was and keep getting the same. So I would just tell mm -hmm. myself, man, keep going. But I will say this one thing, because a lot of people ask me, if I could go back in time, the one thing that I would put more value on is personal development. Mm -hmm. I was so busy trying to chase money yeah. that I wish I would have said, you know what, hold off on trying to get money. You cool with the little car you got, you cool with the little spot that you <laughs> got. Don't try to rush out and get money because that time that you're spending to get money, you can't develop yourself. Right. I would have said, man, just be cool. One, two yeah. years. Develop yourself. Develop your skills. Develop your body. Develop your mindset. Get some skills. Get some sales skills. Uh, develop all of these things, this character. Become that man and then jump out there and try to get some money because everything else is going to be easier. And I That's feel right. like sometimes we rush to go get that money and don't even know what it's for. Yeah. I feel like it's way more important to develop yourself. And if you're young and you still living at your parents' house and you still got a cool car, man, stop don't be trying to rush out there and get no money. Yeah. Focus on building yourself, your discipline, your habits, your mindset. Get some yes. skills, your sales skills, all the, the, the resources on the Internet. Get yourself 100 percent bulletproof. Then when you go out there, you can conquer anything that That's you right. want. And I feel like people want to go out there and get the money too quickly. Yeah. And if I could do it all over again, I would have just developed myself. That would have been the most important thing for me. Come on, Ken. Very last question for you, boss, man. If you could talk to old Pimpy Ken, that was out there in the streets old making Pimpy things happen. Cool. <laughs> what would you say to him hey, right now from Pimpy where you standing Pimpy at right now? been on 80 million records. <laughs> hey, I feel all you. Type of hey, you been there. So, been hey, there, man, I, don't, I wouldn't take nothing back, man. Yeah. I love hey, you the life that I live, man. I mean, I've met some of the greatest people in the world, man. I didn't met all the millionaires. And even to this day, man, people still treat me with great honor. But if it's one thing that I would work on more back then that I didn't work on more is uh, God, my relationship with God, man, my infinite intelligence. Cause I don't know people preferences. So I just say the infinite intelligence, the creator who was never created, I would get closer to him because uh, one thing I've learned as I became closer to him as I got older was that it's a lot of wisdom you know, that comes from on high. Yep. You know, you, you hear Goldie speaking, you know, and everybody would say Goldie came up with that itself. But no, that's it's infinite intelligence. Man, I swear sometimes yeah. it's like a download. Come yeah, on. It's an infinite intelligence and it's 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 the universe that you communicate with. And I wanna be more in tune with with with, with the creator, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you look at some of the people who claimed to be in tune you know, and you look at some of the results, you know, it was pretty uh, remarkable. So yeah. that's one of the things that I want to do. I want to get closer to the creator, you know, and if I was younger and I had a better relationship with God, I had a great relationship with God, but I had a better relationship with God. I think that a lot of things would have turned out a lot different for me, you yeah. know, and I think, you know, cause like I said, one of my uh, preachers that I used to attend this church when I was in Dallas, he said, Ken, he didn't say Ken, he said to the church, he said, you're going to have a major fall through before you have a major breakthrough. That's real talk. He said, but you gonna, he going to pull you out of blessings. It's going to be shaked up, turned around and, yep. and overflow, right? So, you know, then uh, another thing that I learned, you know, when I got closer to the creator is that God will prepare a table before your enemy. Yes, sir. He going to let you eat in front of your, ha your That's haters. Right. That's uh, Psalms 23. Yes, sir. That's and then King it God. also said he'll make your enemies your footstool. Right. So what better advice do you want? You're going to make my haters? You're going to make, you, uh, make my haters my footstool? You're yeah. going to let me eat? He said, I fear no evil. He said, you're going to let me eat in front of my, 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 my haters? He said, I'll prepare a table before your enemies. That's your haters, your That's enemies. Right. So that being said, who wouldn't want to have a closer relationship with a man or, or or entity, whatever you want to call it, female, whatever you your belief is, it's going to make your enemies your footstool. It's going to prepare a table before your enemies. Man. That's favor. And I always tell people, man, favor ain't my fault. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I'd rather have favor with the man upstairs and have faith in, in him. And, and even Napoleon Hill call it infinite intelligence. Mm -hmm. He said, you got to have a relationship with infinite intelligence. And a lot of people, don't believe in God 
for various reasons because things ain't happening when they want to happen. See, your time and God's time ain't the same time. That's right. That's why I always tell people, man, just because your punishment has been delayed don't mean the arm of God has weakened. Yeah, man. Mic drop on that. <laughs> Ken Goldie, and I appreciate y'all brothers so much. I just want to appreciate give you all y'all flowers, man. Keep going. Keep shining. Hip Hop Fraternity tap in with that. Yes, Goldie, bro. Hey, you the game guy, man. Hey, man. hey I salute yeah. you, brother. And look, next time you in town, tap in with us man, again. And we it. got let's you covered, brother. Y'all, make sure to tap in. Follow them. We appreciate y'all for always liking, commenting, and subscribing. Blessed to be your host, Caleb Smith. Take this game, y'all. Until next time. Peace. Ooh.